Dobar dan, you can start. Dobar dan. And so nice to see you all. Hello, Jagos. Uh, I hope Francis Singham is here. So hello, Francis. First of all, deep apologize from the bottom of my heart that I could not attend this beautiful, amazing conference, which I attended in the past couple of times. And, uh, uh, you know, in the public relations business, we should pay attention to the clients, to the projects, and of course, to our great professional meetings, which Daniel Koletic is organizing since many, many years. But uh, really a very important project with clients kept me in Sofia. By the way, last week, I got the award from PR Week as the best professional PR professional in Europe. I couldn't manage to attend the PR Week even celebration to get the award just because of the client's project. So what is the main change of the public relations a couple of years ago and today? In the program, in my speech, there is only one word which we were using, and this word is revolution. Believe me or not, when I wrote the Global PR Revolution book, which I hope that Daniel has, and uh, there is an opinion of Daniel, and uh, also opinion of my good friend Francis Singham, our chief executive of ECO, on the back. I made an interview with 100 people from 65 countries. This is a very deep and very significant research, you know, to ask 100 people from all continents, from 65 countries, countries with one question, whether it's a revolution or not. 20% of them said it's evolution, it's not a revolution, because they said, okay, we had printed media, then we had radio, and then we had television. Now we have internet and Facebook and Instagram. So it's just one more step. 80% agreed with me and said revolution. Why? The truth is very simple because we own media. We never, ever, ever before owned media. Now we have our own media. You have your own media. You have social media, you have websites, you have your blogs, your forums, your corporate websites. And this is this amazingly big, significant change. On one hand, these media, first time in the history, are interactive. You write, and then 100 people can correct your opinion, or agree with you, or disagree with you. In the past, just a couple of years ago, you go, someone says something wrong on the TV, or in the news, or whatever morning show, against your client. So what do you do? You call the media, you ask them, uh, you, you, of course you complain, uh, they may give you the speech, they may not, but it will be a day after or two days after. Today, it happens in minutes. So we all own media and this media are interacting. Number two, which is I think even most important, this media first time in the history are measurable. And this is the main reason of the death of the printed media, of death of the newspapers and magazines. Not because they have bad journalism, not because they are wrong, not because they have this ink and you may get dirty when you read your newspaper or any other reason, but because social media are measurable in a way that clients would like to invest money in social media for their advertising and their promotion. You may have the best newspaper in Slovenia or Croatia or in my country, Bulgaria, regards from Sofia, by the way, I speak from Sofia from my office uh, at the moment. It's a very neighboring. You may, you may have the best, best, best ever journalism and journalists and best coverage and best newspaper, but if there will be no ad advertisement, then this media cannot exist. So in the past, not far away from now, our clients were coming and saying, hey, Max, well, there is a small news, page number nine in the main newspaper or even international newspaper, Financial Times or Guardian or whatever. 
uh, how many readers do we have of our small news? Nine, page number nine, down left. And then you say, oh, it's a uh, 50,000 circulation, and then four readers read average this newspaper. So 200,000 people had read your news, Mr. Client. Nothing like that. It's a bullshit because you cannot prove this. But today, you can say, oh, Mr. Client, these and these readers from that and that country with this profile had read your ad in the social media. So this is the big, big, big difference. There are three main changes in our business public relations recently. First of all, we are not any more consultants. And you should be absolutely aware of this. We are decision makers. We, the public relations experts, we are decision makers. Imagine that any of your clients, and I'm sure that there are a lot of excellent PR experts in the room now, uh, in this beautiful hotel, spa hotel. But imagine that your client has a crisis. 9.30 in the morning, you see a fake news against one of your clients, which is a big supermarket chain. Then what do you do? You call the client 9.30 and you say, Mr. Client, sorry, but you have a crisis. And then the client says, okay, wait, give me one hour to think. Then I should ask my, uh, my mother company somewhere in Netherlands. And then the Netherlands decision makers, they ask the mother company in London. And then London asks New York, it will take two hours, three hours. We don't have even two minutes, three minutes to solve this crisis because we should respond immediately on social media saying, hey, listen, it's a fake news. It's not the case. So we are decision makers. This is the first and very, very important change in our business, public relations. And this is, by the way, also a revolutionary change. The second big change is that we are now from bridge between our clients and the media, which sometimes 10% of our job is still like that. Me, clients come to us and say, Max, can you please do uh, a, something interesting to promote this pen in a way that our clients, they buy more pens or uh, I don't know, cup of coffees or whatever. Then we can send the press release to the media. So we rely that media will publish something about that. But in the most of the cases, this bridge between us and media does not exist because we are not interested anymore in traditional media. We go straight to the social media and we write about the pen, the cup of coffee, the whatever product or service our client would like to promote. In that respect, we, the public relations experts, are now something between, or a chemistry between publishers, editors, and reporters. Not any more consultants. Forget about that, that word even. I'm, I'm talking from the point of view of my practice, from the point of view of the practice. Publishers, because we own media, and this is the main characteristic of a publisher. A publisher owns media printed, uh, TV channel, electronic, whatever, online, social media as well, even much stronger. Editors, because we edit text, because we work with the content. So we cannot post on our behalf even, but even not talking on behalf of the client, any text. We absolutely, we are editors because we take care of each single word, especially in, on Twitter, especially on the social media like Instagram with more visuals, Twitter with uh, short text, but meaning more. Reporters, number three. Why reporters? Because we are creating news. Nobody will read anything about the pen or, or, or whatever product of our client or computer or bank services or whatever if we don't create news, if we don't put this context or this, uh, this content or this text in a very interesting newsworthy way. So this is the second big change in our business. First of all, we are not consultants. We are decision makers. 
Secondly, we are a chemistry between publishers, editors, and reporters. And number three, all we are speaking, and I'm, I'm sure that yesterday and today and tomorrow in this amazing place, an interesting conference, ProPR, you will talk about content because it's all about content at the end of the day. I mean, we can have media, we can have everything, we can have beautiful offices, excellent teams, great clients. If we don't create content, we are nothing. But I think that in the past even couple of months, we made a transformation from content managers, which we pretend to be the managers of a good content, into a light storytellers. And this is the future, my dear friends. From content managers, we will turn our business into life storytellers because we must understand that the combination public relations these days is more or less nonsense. Public relations was founded more than 100 years ago when, especially in the United States and the United Kingdom, the corporations did not have did not have any public relations. And on a certain point, because of the trade unions, because of the workers' movements, uh, because of the necessity and because of the media, they decided that some small percent of their relations might be public. Then they started hiring journalists, mainly journalists, 100 and whatever years ago. They started hiring some people to, to manage their public relations because 95 of the relations were not public. Today, 100% of the relations are public. So if we say public relations, it's something like a wet water or transparent window or something like that, you know, because public relations doesn't mean anything because all the relations are public. So coming back that from the content managers, we are now turning into a live storytellers I think even that in the near future, the combination public relations or the name or the brand of our business will change. And it will be something like life relations or life stories or life storytellers. And this will reflect, of course, to the main business we will be doing 24 seven available, 3000 emails every day. So. I, I do, I have between three and 4,000 emails every day. So everyone, you should create a special system how to manage them, how to, how to skip the spam, how to put the importance of the most important, how to make the priorities. And from that perspective, I would, I would like talking about priorities. I'd like to tell you our simple rule of our company since many, many years and the more years, are passing, the more convinced I am that it works very, very effective. This is the rule of three S, speed, simplicity, self-confidence. Speed, because it's the speed of decision-making. This is the speed of answering emails. This is the speed of communications with the client. This is the speed of solving crisis. My dear friends, a couple of years ago, we had eight, 10 hours to solve a crisis. Imagine that you open the newspaper in the morning, you read a bad story about your client. What do you do? You call the client, then you go to the office of the client, then you publish a press release that it's not like that, that it's a fake news or whatever. And then you call a press conference, 10 hours, 10, 12 hours we have. Now we don't have even 10 minutes because if it occurs on social media, it starts to be viral immediately. So speed speed of everything, especially speed of taking decision. I always claim that the worst decision is better than no decision. We should take decisions, we, should, we can correct them afterwards, we can, uh, we can apologize if there is a need, but we should take decisions. So this is the speed. Number two S, the second S, simplicity. It is so crucial these days 
to make our life and our business more simple or simpler. Because every morning we wake up, have a cup of coffee, go on Facebook or Instagram, but mainly on Facebook to see the news, to see who wrote what and uh, to share something, to put something, whatever. But this is millions of letters of information, hundreds of thousands of different news. If we don't make our life simple, if we don't have priorities, one, two, three, four, if we don't know what to do early morning for the whole day, then it will be a mess. To be honest, I do this under the shower because all of us, we have 20, 30 minutes under the shower. In the most cases, it, we are alone in the most cases. So we have time to think and to make our priorities for the day. What is important, what is less important, what shall we do in addition, what shall we do if we have time. But the crisis solutions, communications with clients, from my understanding, should have absolute priority. And the third test is the self-confidence. I don't know a single person which can solve an important PR crisis or issue or case without the self-confidence. And it's valid for the whole life, of course, but I'm talking now with the public relations business. At the end of the day, this is very important, speed, simplicity, self-confidence. And at the end, what is the trend these days? When I wrote the Global PR Revolution uh, two, three years ago, which was published in the US uh, by Simon & Schuster, the, the first edition, and then in many other countries all over the world, I didn't realize that the trend caused by the social media, caused by this media revolution, will be as it is today in 2022. There is a very fast merge. And by the way, the pandemic and the corona crisis made this merge much faster even between the three main businesses in the public communications. And this is advertising, public relations, and digital. And you in your offices, in your businesses, in your companies, you can see how fast these three main businesses, advertising, public relations, and digital will merge into one business. The advertising companies are doing social media. The public relations companies are doing advertising in social media. And digitals, of course, are trying to do also advertising on social media. And sometimes they're publishing some text or content, which is the public relations business. And the big clash, the big dispute is which business of those three will be prevailing. A lot of people say advertising because and the, the advertising people, of course, they say advertising because they own media, they own media buying, they can, they can publish, they can influence media. The digitals, they say, that's us. We are the future. We will be the owners of the future United Business because we own the social media content. We can create applications. We can create tax and all those things. But I really would like to say loud and clear, the PR experts will be the leading in the future United business. And the reason is very simple. The reason is that we are the masters of the content. We are the masters of the content. You can have the best advertising space, both in the media or outdoor or TV, social media, whatever. You can have the best social media applications or different softwares or different small tricks. If you don't have content, zero effect for our clients, zero effect for us. So non-communications business can exist without the content. And we, the PR experts are the owners of the content. We know how to combine the words. We know how, where to put the verb. We know how to attract, attract the attention. We know, we know even how to create sexy and attractive content in a way that people will read. Will read it. So the future business will be one merged. It will be based on social media. It will be based on interactive and measurable media, maybe will not be even called social media. 
but we must be ready to manage this and we must be well prepared in advance, excellently educated, reading every single day. Every day I wake up at seven o'clock, make, make a cup of coffee and go on the internet to read at least one article concerning my business, public relations, at least. Why? Because every single day things are changing and there is something new. So education is crucial. And at the end, I just want to emphasize the role of ECO, the International Communications Consultancy Organization. I'm sure that our chief executive and my good friend Francis Singham uh, spoke about this. ECO has now about, I think, 57 countries from all continents, including Slovenia, including Croatia, of course, including Serbia. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy that ECO is the worldwide guarantee for the ethical and professional public relations business. Let me emphasize on the ethics, and with this I will finish. Ethics is the most important point, whatever we do. If you go to a shopping center, you buy a box with potatoes or tomatoes or whatever, and there you go home back and they're bad, then you go back to the shop and they say, listen, I mean, it's uh, something wrong. Then they may give you back the money, then they may change you, this, the, the product or whatever. But this is a case between you and the seller, between you and the shopping mall or the grocery store or whatever. If we put one sentence in, on media, no, no, no matter if it's a classical, traditional or social media, we may damage millions of people if we create a fake news. Even if, you make a, if we make a mistake, not intentionally, if we are bad professionals and we make a mistake on social media, it may have amazing damages, big damages, which, is, uh, which may harm clients, may mislead, mislead the readers and may put a lot of people in misunderstanding because this, is, this remains on social media. So from my side, everything I wanted to say, but most probably I should, I should finish with pragmatism. All of us, we must be very pragmatic in our day-to-day -day business. Let me tell you a story. 27, 28 years ago, the famous uh, Jay Leno interviewed the Conrad Hilton, the founder of Hilton Hospitality Network. And at the end of the two hours interview, Hey, General Jay Leno said, Mr. Hilton, you have one minute to tell to our 22 million viewers the most important thing in your life. And then Conrad Hilton said, which is the camera? This camera? This camera? I don't need uh, one minute. I have 15 seconds. And then Leno said, okay, 15 seconds. Tell it. And then Conrad Hilton looked at the camera and said, dear guests, I have a warm request. Once you have a shower, please put the carton inside the tube because a lot of wasting water is going outside. Thank you very much. Pragmatism. You know, this was not the guy to say, my hotels are the best or we have the best service or whatever. The water is wasting. So this was his case. Let's remember this, let's be pragmatic and let's be very, very effective for our clients and don't forget, never stop learning 24 seven. Thank you very much, Kalareti. If you have any questions, I'm open to answer. And also you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever you want, find me and we can continue this conversation. Thank you. Okay, one more applause for Matthew Deha. Thank you, thank you.